Bible Nowhere presents God as omnipotent, omniscient, or omnipresent. So in this video, Dan is arguing that God is not omnipotent, omniscient, or omnipresent. And while I agree with some of his reasoning, I think his conclusions are a bit sloppy and overstated. So let's look at omniscience first. So citing instances in which God changes his mind or doesn't know about future things is a bad argument for God not being omniscient. And the reason this is a bad argument is because it assumes that propositions about what free agents will do in the future have truth values. And that's a contested issue in philosophy. In epistemology, it's well established and accepted that knowing something means that it is true. The fact that God doesn't know that I have six fingers on my right hand does not entail that God is not all-knowing because the proposition is not true. I don't have six fingers on my right hand. Now consider the proposition Dan McClellan will post a video 27 days from now. Many philosophers would say that statements such as these about what free agents will do in the future, they just don't have truth values. They might maintain that all statements like the one I just made about Dan are neither true nor false, or they might maintain that all such statements are false until Dan makes a decision. Philosophers bicker about how to cash this out, but the reason I mention this is because God not knowing what Saul would do before he did it doesn't count against God's omniscience if beforehand there was no truth value regarding propositions about Saul's actions. There was nothing there for God to know. However, this is all assuming that Dan is correct in his interpretation of Scripture, which he takes to depict God as not knowing the future. There are many scholars who would push back on the Scriptures that Dan is thinking of and argue that it does not, in fact, suggest a lack of knowledge on God's part. Now, Dan doesn't present specific issues that he has in mind here. He doesn't talk about the specific Scriptures, so I'm just going to suggest looking at John Peckham's book on divine attributes to get a good example of what Scriptures he probably has in mind and how other scholars might push back on his interpretation of them. So when it comes to omniscience, Regardless of where one stands regarding open theism and divine foreknowledge, Dan is simply mistaken. What about omnipresence? Well, here I'm going to simply say that omnipresence is surrounded by controversy and how it is to be understood. Some think that it implies God is present in every specific point or place in space, while others might hold that it merely means God is transcendent of space and is not restricted by it. If this later understanding is used, various scriptures about God's presence in a specific location or him leaving a location, they don't contradict God's omnipresence at all. So on this issue, Dan is also mistaken. Finally, we have omnipotence. So for this, Dan says that the Bible presents God is limited in power and his capabilities, and that God <clears throat> is even defeated by a foreign God in 2 Kings 3. Let's start by recognizing that not all limits or lack of abilities would entail that God is not omnipotent. I posted a long video about omnipotence the other day. I recommend, recommend my viewers go watch. For this video, I'm simply going to note that if God promises to only operate in the world and with the other gods according to some rules of engagement that both he and they have agreed to, God's inability to violate those rules of engagement would not entail tail that he lacks omnipotence because breaking his promise would be morally wrong. And omnipotence makes no claim to be able to do morally wrong actions. Turning now to 2 Kings 3, Dan has massively misrepresented what goes on in this chapter. In verse 18 and 19, we are told that the Lord would give the Moabites into the hands of the Israelites, and they shall attack every fortified city and every choice city, and they will ruin every good thing with stones. We are told in verses 24 and 25 that this is what the Israelites did. The fact that they were repelled after the pagan sacrifice did not prevent Yahweh's promised victory from occurring. Finally, Dan says that these concepts are not found in scripture. However, here also I think he oversteps as these concepts did not just spring up as a result of Greek philosophy. There is data in scripture that seems to um, give way to these conceptions about God. So for instance, in scripture, God is called Almighty in Revelations 1.8, along with uh, some other places. And etymologically, this just means all-powerful. Jeremiah 32.17 says nothing is too hard for God. And Luke 1.37 says that anything is possible with God. So to wrap this up, dogmatic Dan has in fact overstaped the depth.